No, it was. Is that? Hey, hey, you can hear me now. Um, so this is Jeremy. He works at uh, iMeasureU, uh, which is a wearable startup in Auckland, and he's going to be talking about uh, web security. Thank you. So I'm going to talk about security, which is really weird because I don't know anything about security. So we'll go into that talk knowing that, and please be kind to me at the end. Um, so about me, I'm an embedded system engineer, so most of my stuff's in C, but then usually I use Python to kind of break out of that and talk to the real world. Um, I like open source software, open source hardware, sort of electronics, and most recently, security. Um, so the disclaimer, just like Brenda, I liked her, her disclaimer, uh, it's sort of more, edu uh, sort of more um, fun than legal advice or security advice. So just use these as the beginning of your introduction to security. You know, don't, oh, I saw that Jeremy's talk, so now that's what I'm going to do and blame Jeremy. So. so my security, the reason I got into security is I went to KiwiCon. Has anyone been to KiwiCon? Woo! Great, so there's a, quite a few people that haven't been to KiwiCon. Um, it's an awesome conference. I loved it. It was the first time I went last year, and um, it was just great. You'll probably end up doing a talk on security in you know, sort of about six months' time if you go to it. Um, so what happened? Uh, don't get a police ankle monitor. Well, I wasn't really going to get one of those before anyway, but now I really won't get one of those. Um, World War II bomb fuses, fascinating. Never thought I'd say that. Um, Turn your monitor off when you leave the office, otherwise your data might escape through QR code videos. Um, don't ride electric skateboard downtown LA, otherwise someone might disconnect your remote and take over your skateboard and go the other direction. Uh, there was lots of beer, some handcuffs, badge challenge, uh, lots of great people, and it was just awesome, or splendid. Uh, I thought it was just great. So I'd highly recommend it that you go along and check it out. Uh, it's in Wellington every year usually. Um, so a little bit after that, I was inspired at KiwiCon. I saw this tweet by Laura Bell. Um, so she's well known in the security um, sector. And she had a poor startup student, non-for-profit, yes, wanted super cheap seat. That's me on a safe deck 10-week course. Excellent. So, so I applied. And luckily, I was lucky enough to get given a seat on this. Um, so this talk is really uh, for me to reinforce what I learned on that talk. Um, nothing forces you to learn something more than having to tell other people about it. Um, so it's a bit outside my comfort zone, which is also a good thing. Um, but also, if I can inspire you guys, get you interested in the same thing I'm interested in, you know, then we can have a good discussion at morning tea or something. So <clears throat> why is security so hard? Uh, I, had, I had a slide here that was going to scare you. You know, it's like, oh, this thing happened last month, and this thing happened two months before that, and you know, your car is going to go off the road, whatever. Um, but you guys have all heard that, uh, and, and we know that security is important, and we know that bad things happen to these big companies, but yet we still make the same mistakes. So why is it that, even though we know the consequence, we still end up in the same uh, routine? Um, so there's some of the common sort of questions are, are there really people out there who will do that? And I did get this question asked at me a couple of weeks ago. So yes, someone will enumerate your user list if you tell them the email's valid, but the password's not. Um, but we're releasing it next week. You know, we're giving it away, we're releasing it next week. We don't have time to put security in before we release it. And nobody will attack us. You know, we're just a little company in New Zealand trying to make it really big. Uh, um, actually, that's a good one. So, actually, we're on nobody will attack us. It doesn't really matter when you're really small, but when when you're really big, then it really matters. So, where's that line where you where you no longer small and start becoming big? You need to have it sort of all set up from the beginning. Well, we don't store anything important. You know, we don't have medical records or something. It's fifty dollars for a medical. We don't have that. You know, we've just got email addresses or we've just got this thing or that thing. Um, you don't know that it's important until you've lost it. Um, so even just a, an email address can be devastating to some people. Um, if that is published and, oh, this person went to that website, can mean a lot of things. <laughs> Actually, as a side note, I, I had a demo application based on that leak, uh, but I thought that joke was not that appropriate. Um, well, we can't afford it yet. We'll wait until we get investment. 
uh, then we'll then we'll do security. You know, until then we'll convince our investors it's fine and they should give us lots of money before we make it really good. Um, or my framework already handles the security. I'm all good. I use Django and it's out of the box. It's good. And th what are you talking about? Um, so these are funny because we've all kind of heard them in one shape or form or another. Um, but I think what it all boils down to is, as a developer, security is my responsibility. So I want to write good code, and secure code is good code, therefore I need to write secure code. Um, and it's my responsibility, it's not, it's not someone else's responsibility. I, don't, I can't go to the security team and say, make my thing secure, I've finished it now. Uh, and it's actually not just developer, it's anyone. Um, as a uh, tester, as a insert anything here, I've, I've touched this application, I should at least think about what implications my work has had on it. Um, and ask your security team for help instead of forgiveness. So they're not going to do your work for you. You can't go to them and say, I need you to make this secure. Uh, it's your job. You're, doing the, you're coding it. And at the end of the day, you're going to write the software. Um, so they're your experts. They're the people you go to for help. They're going to help you uh, write the nice code. And if you go to them and say, I need you to uh, you know, fix this shitty problem, no one's going to be very receptive to that. But if you went to them and said, look, I would like your input on how I should do this better, um, you'll find a huge, huge change in attitude. And if you don't have a security team, that doesn't exclude you. There are plenty of small security companies, uh, consultants that will help out um, on a range of budgets. So there's no excuse, really. So I'll introduce this application, uh, Pastel. Um, so it is a uh, project I found on GitHub that was s s small enough that I could show you in in about 20 minutes. And um, it's, it's basically a paste bin. So if you've used GitHub and you've got their GIST program, you can basically submit a little bit of text for your function. And uh, it looks like this. You go in, you push the link, you say hello. And we just submit that. There's our, there's our text. And you can see a list of the recent ones. And there it is. And you can go and have a look. Okay, that's all great. Now, if you, if you didn't want everyone to be able to see this, you might want to put a password on it. So there's, hello, secure, three exclamation marks. Um, so here we've got password to protect this paste. Uh, got my password there, really good password. Uh, there's a button, I don't really know what it means, um, so I'll just push submit. So cool, now it's password protected. Uh, I need to now enter this password every time I want to open this thing. So ABC, I mean, whatever my password was, uh, and there's your, there's your thing. Now, the keen observers, uh, what's, it, what's the problem with this? Does anyone know? No, well, well, no, that's okay. Yes, yes, this is going out plain text. So I just put in my ABC and I push submit, and I'm on the open Wi-Fi with no encryption. Anyone else who's in the room, they could have seen that go by and got my password. That really is just, that's the, that's the worst, right? There's nothing you can do about that. Um, so if we go back, we go back, uh, create a new one, super encrypted. So the, the author of this package had said, oh, well, actually, I'll just zoom in on this a bit, uh, keep in mind that passwords are transmitted in clear text. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, that's not very good. <laughs> keep that in mind, whatever that means. Um, and the password is not ciphered in the client side because shipping an SHA-1 JavaScript library is perhaps too much. If you check the is encrypted checkbox, make sure your password is ciphered with SHA-1, uh, or perhaps you better use the console helper. So I'm a user of this thing. I don't, I've got no idea what he's talking about. He's gone on about sh an implementation of, of his JavaScript library. Anyway, let's try it out. So I've got my super encrypted thing. Um, I need to make sure it's SHA1 encrypted. OK, well, we can do that. After I Googled and found out how to do that. OK, so.
there I've just hashed the word orange into those numbers. It's an algorithm that converts orange into that set of numbers. Uh, that's all it does. SHA1 is not a very good hashing algorithm either. It depends what you're using it for. Um, so I copy that text, and I go, I paste it there, I click the button, and I submit. Great, now it's protected, and I type in orange. It's super encrypted. What's wrong with that? Right, there's no, there's does nothing. Yeah. I've just sent my hash, which is the password, over the wire. It's still, it's still plain text. Um, so I don't know why it's got that super encrypted feature there. <laughs> it says a side note: the author of this package does actually um, host this as HTTPS, and he does do all the right things there. So it's not something that he's doing really wrong. Um, it's just that this feature is maybe a bit misleading. Um, so let's. See what else we can. <laughs> right. So let's go HTTPS. Uh, a bit of a quick recap. That gives us confidentiality. Uh, our data is encrypted. That's what we were after. Our ABC is no longer ABC. It's no one can read it. Okay. We also get a couple other extra things which are nice. We've got authenticity, means we can make sure that we're talking to the right person can validate that the person who's receiving this is actually the one we want to send it to. So you, just, you can make sure it's ASB Bank that you're talking to. Um, and you can verify that. Right? And integrity is that my data that I'm sending is going to be the same when it gets to the other end. So even though someone might not be able to look at it, they can't actually change it either. <clears throat> so what do you do? What's the basic things. I had a whole bunch of lists of things here which, were, which ended up being far too complicated and actually because this is the first time I've really deployed an HTTPS, I went back to basics because perhaps it's the same for you guys. Um, use HTTPS on your whole site. Don't, don't, not even a question. Don't just put on your login form. It's everywhere. Um, we'll get to some of the reasons why later on. So if you don't know what you're doing, don't host it yourself. How many people have self-signed certificates of unknown strength in, on a website somewhere? Right? Yeah, yeah. So my idea here is um, you're probably going to leave them there for a year or two years or get back to them eventually. Um, and maybe when you get back to them, you realize, oh, that was a bad idea. I should actually improve this. Well, if, if you just get someone else to host it from the get-go, maybe you pay the $10, $20 um, per month with Heroku. But whatever uh, platform you find, pay that up front to get a, a reasonable expectation of security, and then later on when you're, more, when you're sort of going into more advanced stuff, you can say, okay, I can actually do this myself, um, and, and that's when you do that. Uh, so for example, if you're going to do it yourself, the Mozilla SSL config generator, that will generate a starting point for your web server for SSL configuration, that's just pretty good. So, so this is an example, you take, okay, I've got Apache or Nginx, and, and it's, it's basically the beginning of, of what you should get going. I've, I've used Heroku for, for this web application. <coughs> so first thing I did to get HTTPS, I went, got a certificate, bought a certificate. It was $10. You won't need to buy certificates soon with Let's Get Encrypted, Let's, en Let's Encrypt, um, a free uh, automated uh, root authority. But that's coming out next month, so just keep an eye on that. And so I bought my certificate, I uploaded it, I followed their blog thing, and right, now I have HTTPS. Let's just verify that that's what we've got. Okay, so... Um, we'll just go back to the main page. Might take a bit of time for Heroku to realize something's changed. And hey, we went back to the main page. It's redirected automatically to Spastel. Spastel is a secure pastel. So spastel.xyz is the uh, you know, very popular domain name of months, also a dollar on special. Um, so we've got Spastel XYZ. It's redirected automatically, so that's really important. Um, so that was my first change to his program. 
is to automatically redirect uh, whoops let's just okay so we had to go in here and we added a bit of middleware to bottle so it's basically every request comes in it's just checking to see should we need to redirect this and we'll redirect it for everything so that was quite a neat neat little thing I found on Stack Overflow don't know what the license is on that but I've put the link in there so maybe that's okay um, cool so what's next so we've got our secure pastel now it's a bit of a bother. Sorry, just just before we get into that, it's a bit of a bother. Every time I I look at my um, want to go and create my thing, I have to create I have to enter in my password. So if we look at our recent items, um, it's nothing there because we just restarted it. So password protect. Um, so every time I want to access this, I need to enter that password, and that's really annoying. Um, so what can we do about that? Um, there's this magical place where you store things called cookies. And the first time you discover these, you think this is amazing. These I can do all sorts of stuff with this. I can. This is a great huge thing. I can. I can put all my application logic in these cookies. It's great. It tastes great. Um, so let's store our password in a cookie. <laughs> I mean, I know you guys even know that sounds like a bad idea, right? Uh, just because it's a security talk, and that's why I said just, let's do it. And you say no. Uh, but why is it bad? Uh, because cookies can be read using JavaScript. Um, so even though you, you might be transmitting that cookie using HTTPS, uh, a, a bit of script on your page could actually read the contents of that cookie. So we protect it. There's a flag on your cookie. You set HTTP only to be true. Um, and that means that your cookie is only accessible uh, through HTTP. It's only going to send it to your server. You can't actually access it through JavaScript. Um, and, but cookies are sent with every request, which means even though your web server redirects you to the HTTPS version, um, if you just if the person just went to the normal www.spastel.xyz, it would go, oh, here's the cookie you need, uh, and that would go out uh, in plain text. So that's not good either. But you can set the secure flag to true. Uh, so that means that I only send the cookie when uh, it's an HTTPS request. Uh, but ultimately, cookies are not, not encrypted by the client. We don't know what's going to happen to them. So you never store anything personal, never store anything identifiable. Um, there are tools, there are viruses that will go and scan your cookies and grab all the information. It's, it's just a bad idea. You don't put anything important in the cookie. So what do I do then? I still don't want to enter my password every time. We authenticate and authorize. Now, I've highlighted those two words. So, uh, has anyone heard of auth? Let's add some auth into our program. We'll auth it, uh, OAuth. Uh, but there's actually two words there. So, and, and they're actually very different. They mean different things. So, authentication is we're verifying who somebody is. So, Jeremy's logged in. Is it actually Jeremy? That's all it is. Just making sure that it's Jeremy that's talking to us and not someone who just claims to be Jeremy and actually isn't. Um, but then authorization is to make sure that Jeremy is allowed to view that thing. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is, that's the authorization. So can Jeremy delete this database? Whatever it is you've got on your application. So let's add auth and auth into Spastel. So, let's have a quick look at what we've added. We just added our authentication to make sure Jeremy is who he says he is. And there's a few things we need to add here. Um, we need to add a few more libraries. Um, so we've got uh, some utilities for SQL Alchemy. Um, we've got some password, password library. Um, we've added a new table into our, uh, into our model. 
new model into our data, into our system that is going to hold a username and password. Now, actually, by the way, this is the first mistake I'm making is I'm doing this myself, right? First thing you should be thinking is don't do it yourself. Go and look at your framework and use their tool. Um, there will, so there's heaps of gotchas when you're doing this, and this is a very simplified example. So you don't want to make those mistakes and, and find out about them later on. Uh, the problem is for Bottle, there's a package called Bottle Auth, and I didn't really want to suggest that we use Bottle Auth to write up to saying don't use Auth. You must tell you know, tell us what Auth you mean, uh, and then it imports a, a thing called Auth into your namespace, and I just couldn't do it. Um, and there's another one for um, for that was for that was actually for authentication, so it was for third-party services like Google and Facebook and stuff. So we've added that table. Um, we have we've added a few more methods to our our server, a few more routes. We want to be able to sign up and log in and do things like that. So on our page. Oh, well, just uh. mm. Okay, so I'll just get that underway. Um, uh, so we've added in our login. That's going to accept our username and password. Um, we're going to need to give our user something that they can use to then later authenticate. And that's the, uh, the, usually what we do is we give them a token or a uh, session ID or something like that. And that's basically a number that is very random, cryptographically random, that we can then check on our end to make sure that it's the same one we gave you earlier. And you can have timeouts on that. You can control things like that. Um, so when the user logs in, you verify they are who they, who they say they are by checking your database. Right? They've got the right username. They've got the right password. And then you give them this token so that every subsequent request, they can just give you the token. And you can say, yep, you've been to the theme park, theme park before. You've got your stamp on your wrist. So. We've added a login form. So this is just to say, uh, oh, this. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll log in. Hey, we, that's not right because we're not actually a member of the site yet. Let's sign up. Create an account. New user. OK. Uh, so I haven't actually logged in yet. I've just registered myself on the website, and now I can go and. So by the way, these, these passwords are still being sent in plain text. We haven't changed anything there, right? It's just now that we've got HTTPS encrypting our traffic. So as far as the implementation of that form, web form and stuff, I mean that, that's all the same. Uh, your traffic's encrypted. That's why you needed to redirect everything so you don't make a mistake and have an image leak your your cookie your password. Uh, but the difference is now that we should get a token back from the server. And that's in the form of a cookie. It's a really handy little extension that uh, will let you just view the cookies of your website that you're currently on. I think it's called uh, Cookie Explorer. I only enable it when I'm doing, a, doing something with it because it sort of needs all of the data to all your websites. But anyway, so there's my token. I've got this cookie. It's got a thing called token. It's got some random string in it. And I don't know who, I can't see who this is for anything like that. It's just a random number. And you can see I've got my secure ticked and my HTTP only ticked. Cool. So now we're logged in. Let's go and make sure that we can create really secure text. Um, and I've changed this bit at the bottom now, so now it just says, is this pace private? So now that I've signed in, I can say this one should be only for me. And then when I sign in next time, I don't have to keep logging in for every, talk, for every paste, but all my private ones will be available. So let's make this private. 
and we'll submit. So here it is. We've got the really, really secure one. And if we go back to our list of items, I can still view it. I don't have to type in my password. That token's being sent around everywhere. Right. So now we've got some user input. I modified that page. It was OK before, because all it accepted was a password. Uh, but now I've actually got this username coming in. So I need to be careful, because you don't ever trust your users. They will feed your database cream cheese and pizza just to see what will happen. So this is the classic example of injection, where you select everything from my users where password equals the user input. Right? And you've got quotes around your user input. Great. Uh, and then along comes your user and gives you his very, very secure user, uh, his password. He's got symbols and he's got numbers and equal sign and everything. That's great. Uh, except now my query looks like this. Select everything from users where password equals empty or one equals one. So query is my cheese and the result is everything. I hear what some of you are saying. That's SQL. I don't use SQL. I use a NoSQL database. <laughs> and it executes JavaScript. <laughs> anyway, um, so check your framework for tools to escape user input. input. Uh, most database drivers, if not all of them, have a proper way to bind parameters. So you just say, this is the thing. It goes here, and here it is. I, I've, I'll give it to you as a parameter instead. Um, and you perform whitelists instead of blacklists because you can never possibly think of all of the crazy combinations people are going to come up with. So if you are limiting it to a small subset, you use a whitelist. Um, and make sure your web server is running with low privileges and create a user. Uh, those are more sort of ambulance bottom of the cliff kind of thing. But it should be done anyway. So our Spastel application, now that I changed it, is vulnerable to this. So we go to create a new, let's log out of Jeremy, and we'll go and create a new account. And my username is script alert hello script. That's, I use that on all the forums. It's always available. <laughs> so submit. Yay, I've, I created an account. Now let's log in. That's uh, fine. Ah, oh, <laughs> what's going on? Ah, oh. let's go and look at look at another page. Ah, so that what's just happened there is a user outside of my control has been able to execute some JavaScript on my page. Uh, what's worse, it's now in my database, so that every time someone else visits that page for that, well, that's a username, but you can see how it would work with a comment for a blog or something. Um, so that's your cross-site scripting. So malicious scripts sent to a user browser. Um, it usually happens when you don't es escape your output. And it can be easy to forget if, you're, if it's coming from a database, right? Because um, it's like, oh, that's, that's, I put that stuff in there. That's fine. Uh, all, all those comments, oh, yeah, well, I didn't write all of those. Um, so the consequences can be really bad. Um, so if you haven't protected your cookies, you could read a cookie, and you could send it off somewhere else. Uh, you could redirect the user, you can steal information, you can do all sorts of crazy things. It's usually, usually you can use cross-site scripting with something else to do something even worse. Um, so an important thing here, I'm running out of time, but don't write your own sanitization function. Uh, it's like, I'm going to implement a comms library. I'm going to do a PhD's worth of work in five minutes. Uh, so don't reinvent the wheel, just reuse something that's proven to work. So in summary, we've looked at HTTPS. We've done some auth and auth um, that you're not going to say auth anymore. We've got some sessions. We've given a token back to our user. We've discovered that we had some user input problems and uh, briefly touched on some cross-site scripting. So big thanks to uh, Laura Bell and Tom for helping me with this presentation. So I was a bit of a noob with this, and that was nice to get their sort of run through of it. Um, so thanks, guys.
So the question was, have I done challenge response like an OAuth style thing? Um, no, I haven't done that. Um, it gets into this, this yeah, that's a, a tricky thing as well. It's a good idea because then you don't have to store the uh, passwords on your system. So you've got sort of a little bit less um, uh, things, a little bit, something less to worry about. But no, I haven't tried. There are some libraries for bottle that can do that, that, Python, that bottle auth that I mentioned. Uh, but sometimes you, you, you can't get around it. You'll need a user account. People don't want to use Google. They don't want to use Facebook. They don't want to use Twitter. They don't want to use GitHub. They just want to give you an email address and a password. Well, I I think that so the question the response was uh, it's more secure that way so your password's not being sent plain text. Uh, well, even well, yeah, okay. Um, if you have the hash, you can still get the password. That, that's. It's not, it's not, but you're throwing, going, it's encrypted, so you'll be okay. Um, 